This is the Kenyan teacher one more time. It is our pleasure to present Form 1 work as tested in the year 2022 KCSE exams. This is 233 stroke 1 chemistry paper 1. Before we begin, we look at some statistics concerning Form 1 syllabus. So in the year 2022, Form 1 content was tested in four questions. That is question 4, question 18, question 19, and question number 21. Each question was three marks, giving a total of 12 marks in the whole paper, representing 15% of the total marks in chemistry paper 1 for the year. Welcome as we take you through the expected responses to these four questions. We begin with question number four. Part A. Give a reason why painting or galvanizing iron sheets protects them from rusting. The expected response here is that both painting and galvanizing provide, both methods provide a coating. They provide a coating that keep, keep the ion sheets, that keep the ion sheets from oxygen and water. Remember, oxygen and water are the conditions necessary for the sheets to rust. So painting keeps off water and oxygen the same to galvanizing. So it's one mark, coating half a mark, then oxygen and water the next half a mark. In part B, we are now asked to explain the advantage of galvanizing over painting. And here, the candidate was expected to respond that in galvanizing, in galvanizing, remember we use zinc to galvanize. So in galvanizing, zinc acts as a sacrificial metal. Zinc acts as a sacrificial metal for the first hallmark. We continue that it acts so since it is more reactive than iron, of course. It is more reactive than iron, thus prevents rusting. Now, we know in painting, in painting, rusting will continue or rusting will take place. Rusting will take place if the coat is broken. So here, when you break the coat, rusting goes on. But in, in galvanizing, even if the coat is broken, zinc will still be sacrificed at the expense of iron. So it was two marks. Zinc's are, zinc acts as a, a sacrificial metal, one mark. And in painting, rusting will take place if coat is broken for the next mark. We proceed now to the next question. And this is question number 18. Question number 18 was a very, very simple one. For three marks, candidates were asked to describe the correct procedure, the correct procedure of heating a liquid in a test tube using a Bunsen burner. 
So here, we were expected to respond that when you are heating a liquid in a test tube using a Bunsen burner, the first thing you do is to hold the test tube with, you hold the test tube with a test tube holder. That would earn ourselves the first mark. Then we will keep the test tube, so we keep it slanting. We keep it slanting. Instead of slanting, a candidate can go for tilted or sideways. This idea of keeping the test tube slanting, tilted or sideways, would earn the next mark. And of course, with the mouth, with the mouth of the test tube facing away. Or, instead of facing away, you can talk about facing the other direction. So, facing away, the next half mark. And then we continue that we heat, we heat the liquid from top downwards, downwards for the next half mark. And not and not from bottom to top. And not from bottom to top. And as we do this, we rotate. Instead of rotating, we can use the word remove, or you can use the word withdraw. Withdraw from the flame occasionally. So rotating the next half mark, giving us a total max of three. So candidates, this is the correct procedure of using a test tube to heat a liquid using a Bunsen burner. Now you know. We proceed to the next question, and that is number 19. Question 19. The melting and boiling points of naphthalene are 80 degrees Celsius and 218 degrees Celsius, respectively. We are told that a sample of naphthalene was cooled from 250 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius. Candidates were expected that on the axis provided, sketch and label the cooling curve that would be obtained. So the axis given were plain. There were no calibrations. Temperature on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. A student was expected to plot temperatures given here beginning with 250 up here and 25 degrees Celsius down here. These were the temperatures through which our naphthalene were cooled. So in between, we were supposed to actually approximate 80 degrees Celsius, which is the melting point of naphthalene, and 218 degrees Celsius, which we are told is the boiling point. So plotting these four temperatures, a candidate would score two marks, a half for each. And the temperatures were to begin at 25 and end at 250. After that, we would cool from 250. Temperature of the gaseous or the vapor naphthalene would decrease from 250 degrees Celsius up to 218 degrees Celsius. When now we expect the vapor to condense into liquid. At 218, 
when the vapor is condensing into liquid, we expect a constant temperature. As cooling continues, now our naphthalene has changed from vapor into the liquid. The temperature of the liquid will then decrease gradually until our freezing point, which is 80 degrees Celsius. At the freezing point, again, we expect temperature to remain constant. And then as our liquid changes into solid, the temperature of the solid would again gradually decrease. So this would be the expected shape of our cooling curve. We have scored two marks already. So the third mark would come from the general shape of the graph or of the curve. One more mark totaling to three marks as directed by the question. Question 21. Table 4 gives the boiling points of three liquids. We have hexane, 68.7 degrees Celsius, butanol, 99.5 degrees Celsius, and water at 100. So we are asked to describe how the following mixtures can be separated. The first one being hexane and butanol. We look at the temperatures very close. Exen 68.7, butanol 99.5. So here, the method we would actually use is fractional distillation. But just mentioning the method would only earn ourselves one, not, not one mark, but half a mark. The question is very clear. We are supposed to describe. So you don't stop at mentioning the method. You continue to write that we are supposed to put the two liquids the two liquids in a fractionating column fractionating column from there we are supposed to heat for half mark the mixture heat the mixture gently gently then what do we expect we expect hexane to distill, to distill off at 68.7 degrees Celsius, leaving, leaving butanol as residue. So it's one and a half, mentioning the method half, hitting the mixture another half, and telling us that exam distills off the last half mark. Last question, we were asked to again describe how to separate hexane and water as a mixture. Here, hexane, we know, is not miscible with water. They don't mix completely. They form layers. So we first start by mentioning the method that we can use. So the method you can use is use of separating funnel use of separating funnel. Instead of separating funnel, we can use a burette, we can use a dropper, or we can even use a teat pipette. But even decantation method can work. So mentioning any of these would earn ourselves the first mark. Then we now continue with our description that the two, the two liquids form two layers. Or a candidate can say they are immiscible. Once you put them in any one of those apparatus mentioned up there. So we know that because it is less dense, exen will float on water. So what do we do? We drain, we drain the bottom, the bottom of the flask, or rather the funnel. We drain the bottom layer, of course, of the funnel. 
Then discard, we discard the interface. And finally, hexen remains in the flask or the funnel. For the last half mark, so hexen remaining, the last half mark, then the two liquids forming two layers or are immiscible will also earn ourselves a half a mark. Dear candidates, with that, we've come to the end of our short video where we have reviewed from one syllabus as tested in the year 2022, Chemistry Paper 1. We ask that you subscribe to our channel and keep it right here for more insightful reviews. Thanks for watching.